Welcome, this video is about verb orientation, how East Asian University can get the mind of foreign faculties. The logo and besides me are from academic journals that we use for this research. This research is conducted from Yonsei, the Korea's premier private university, led by Professor Watts. And this is the collaboration of three researchers, Jung Min Ko, Min Yang Zhang, and Han Lee. If you have any question, please contact us via email address in the bottom. As Koreans' university are becoming globalized, they seek not only foreign students, but also foreign faculty as well. However, due to the lack of resources, sometimes they fail to hire or maintain those faculties. So now our research pr proposes you four commencements to get the mind of foreign faculties. First, give age diversity. Second, consider gender proportion. Third, assure their job. Fourth, make sure the faculty is foreign friendly. Hello, my name is Min Young Zhang and I'm interested in human resource management of university. And I'll be presenting the first point, give age diversity. According to Profound SSCI article that I found by Ji Lin, in today's society, the issue of age diversity has become increasingly important in human resource management due to the aging of workforce throughout the world. Age diversity can increase creativity and capability of the firm, in this case, the university. Older employees often have a higher level of caring and responsibility than the younger employees. For example, the research conducted by UK government shows that those who are older than 50s are more reliable, loyal, hardworking, and committed to their work. On the other hand, younger employees are normally better educated and physically more capable. Thus, an appropriate level of age diversity will allow the value of both groups of employees to complement one another and help the firm achieve good performance. Also, the survey conducted by us also shows that an average of three countries, Korea, Japan, and China, as faculty members are older than his or her colleagues, he tends to have a more of organization commitment. However, the process of, of combining those two generations should be implied with different tactics depends on the organization's country of origin. East Asian societies are heavily influenced by Confucian cultural values which stress a family-style hierarchy of age. According to Confucian institution, the merit of years is always an important consideration in reward and promotion system in East Asian organizations. And young people are often discouraged from challenging older people even when the older is wrong. This institution has existed in Asian societies for hundreds of years and there is no conclusive empirical evidence to show that it has gone in today's society. For example, in Korea, the process of getting to know someone new is often started off by inquiring about their age. Children are expected to respect and obey their parents, and they are not encouraged to embark on any independent action or to develop initiative. Hence, there is a special power configuration between children and their elders. The role of parents, especially the father, is sometimes transferred to the workplace as the employer equals just the father of the family. However, in the case of university, since no employer is working with employees, the oldest employee could take the role of the father, and the employee, young employees can act as the obedient son. This paternalistic leadership culture gives the leader a lot of power, and great authority, but on the other hand, it gives him the great duty to take care of his subjects or, or subordinates. Overall, this confusion cultural value divides faculties into two separate groups of old and young, and the emotional distance causes inefficient communication between those members. For instance, young employees have to agree to old employees due to courtesy that is forced by confusion culture while old faculties cannot easily reach out to young employees when the help is needed. This phenomenon is also seen in our survey. Our survey results show that young employees tend to have more social interaction while old have lower social interaction with his colleagues. Therefore, it is essential for university to find proper proportion between those two groups and attempt to meditate, mediate the communication between those groups. 
Hello, my name is Halim Lee, and I'll start about the second commitment about consider gender proportion. So, the both correlation between male and social interaction and its relationship with organization commitment are positive. Moreover, both the relationship between female and social interaction and between female and organization commitment reveal as a positive relationship as well. Male are more likely to commit to work than female. However, that does not necessarily mean that females do not indicate much organization or commitment. Since post Asian society is male-dominated society, in general, males show their commitment stronger than females. Yet, when females cooperate one another as a whole in the workplace where there is no male, they tend to show higher organization or commitment as well. With this being said, the level of organization or commitment among workers also varies depending on their work status. Among male workers, regular workers are more committed to the company, while there is no difference detected among female workers, so far as regular and non-regular workers are concerned. So, as you can see in this figure, the interaction between gender and work status was statistically significant. Among men, work status is positively related to the organizational commitment, but among women, the relationship of work status to organizational commitment is not statistically significant. Then, the question remains as to why male non-regular worker shows a substantially lower level of commitment to the organization than the male regular workers, while female non-regular workers reveal no difference from female regular workers. According to the research conducted by Ji Young Sung and others in 2012, Researchers have found that men are generally more assertive and higher self-esteem, while the females are more nurturing and extroverted than the male workers. As seen in the result of the survey, gender of foreign faculties in the department affects both socialization and organization commitment in East Asia. In detail, in the outcome of the gender of foreign workers both in South Korea and Japan, shows that the greater a ratio of one's gender of faculty within department is, the bigger socialization and organization commitment is. It means that since men are more confident than women in the male-dominated society, they are more willing to have more responsibility of their work and have tendency to participate actively. Therefore, it can be described that both male and female workers reveal organizational commitment, while commitment of male workers is more positive than the that of female. When dealing with work status, regular male workers tend to have more than not regular male workers. Also, female workers do not show significant difference in organizational commitment, whether they are in the regular positions or not regular positions. However, this does not necessarily mean that male workers are better than female. In East Asia society, where male dominated exists, female workers are also willing to raise their voice once they are with the same sex. So, it is concluded that it is good to consider gender proportion when hiring the foreign faculties in the university. My name is Jungmin Ko, and I'm going to present how tenure position affects one's socialization and organizational commitment. Before we start, I want to remind that when it comes to the tenure position, we must understand that the relationship between tenure position and organizational commitment cannot be understood alone or as independent and dependent relationship. This is because those members who stay longer usually get tenure position and they are usually older than the other members and thus have higher organizational commitment. Thus, researches about tenure position usually mentions the years that the faculty members stayed in the position as in this research table shows. In our research, however, we did not ask the year they stayed because we thought that the fact that they are tenure position acts as a social barrier that distinguishes those who are at the tenure position and not, thus creating in-group and out-group barrier between those two social groups. Our research, however, revealed an interesting point in this regard by finding out that the ha just having majority of tenured faculty member brings a positive impact on those who are at tenured position. They 
exhibited high level of socialization among themselves, not only organizational commitment. The case is opposite for the non-tenure position. Those who are at those who are not tenured tend to exhibit less organizational commitment and when there are may when the majority of the faculty is not tenured. However, their, ten, their socialization is proved not to be effective. Point four, make sure that you are foreign friendly. Countries and culture affect how one deals with communication and conflict, which will affect socialization and foreign faculty's opinion or commitment to the organization, which may work in their way of communication and may not. The data shows that the percentage of foreign colleagues in the department affect socialization of foreign faculty and organizational commitment in East Asia. The overall relationship between the percentage of foreign colleagues in the department and socialization is a reverse relationship with a medium correlation, meaning having more foreign faculty will decrease intra-faculty socialization. There can be various reasons behind this, but personally, I assume that a large number of the faculty members simply decrease the opportunity for each member to deeply socialize with another member. For Japan and South Korea, having more foreign members in faculty increased foreign members' organizational commitment. But in China, the result was opposite. Again, there can be various reasons behind it, which can be a good research topic for the future. Yet, generally speaking, foreign faculties working in East Asia universities had more commitment to their faculty in university when they are more when there are more members who have similar communication style and mindset. So now we want to wrap up our presentation. East Asian universities must consider these four points when they are hiring foreign faculty. First, they, they must give age diversity in their faculty. And they, just, they should not just give diversity, they also have to implement a way to facilitate the communication between the younger faculty member and older faculty members, such as social media. But un unfortunately, in our research poll, there was no university or at least department that uses social media as a communication tool. So they must be considered when each university they, when, the, when each university hires new foreign faculty member. Point two, they must consider gender proportion. They have to make sure that there is no gender inequality in their department, both in number and both in quality. Point three, they must assure each foreign faculty member's job. Foreign faculty cannot be easily given tenure position, and each university should not try to give tenure position just because they are foreign members. But as our research shows, those who are not tenured feel very unsecured in their job. So each university should give a sense of belonging by constantly making sure that they are valuable members of the department and the university as a whole. Point four, make sure that your department is foreign friendly. When you hire foreign faculty, you are not just hiring their resources, their knowledge. You must understand their mindset, how they solve their conflict. Understanding those features really will increase foreign faculty's organizational commitment. We would like to thank you for listening to our presentation. Uh, we hope that our findings may be used valuable when you decide hiring foreign faculty members. Thank you.